Someday, in the not so distant future, it happens. The moment you realize you're ready for anything. Get a degree in emergency management from Jacksonville State University and be ready for where you're going. It's the morning edition of the Weather Extreme video. This is for the 16th of December, Monday. I'm James Spann. Very famous tornado anniversary today. On this date in 2000, an EF4 tornado came through the southern part of the city of Tuscaloosa, killing 11 people. Just a reminder, this is the core of the fall tornado season. Things like that can happen this time of the year. And we could see some strong storms over the weekend ahead, but it's way too early for anybody to know the specifics of that. The good news between now and then will be dry with a warming trend. There's a look at the big picture this morning. Water vapor satellite view. The trough axis is finally east of the state. The sky is clear and it's cold. Starting off the day mostly in the 20s. Birmingham at 28, upper 20s all the way down to Montgomery, but we'll expect a high in the middle 50s today. Around the nation, very cold around the Great Lakes, up around that big snow cover up there. But again, as the pattern de-amplifies, we're going to trend warmer. Let's look at the model guidance. Numbers are coming up. In fact, by the time the weekend gets here, maybe even as early as Friday, we could be seeing highs at or just over 70. Of course, any time it gets that warm in December, you have to worry about uh, severe weather potential. And we'll take a look at that as we get into the modeling here. But the good news, no problems around the nation this morning. It's very quiet other than a winter weather advisory for a lake effect snow in parts of Michigan. Here's the rain for the next seven days. So this carries us through Monday morning of next week. This will include the weekend rain event. And this is suggesting rain amounts of one to two inches. And that will be at some point over the weekend, as you'll see. Let's take a look. This is the GFS, the 06Z run, valid at noon today. This is at 500 millibars. And again, broad troughing over the east down below that, a very dry air mass in place. Case of severe clear with a high in the middle 50s today. Tomorrow we start the day in the mid 30s, but we warm into the upper 50s. Somebody in West Alabama might see 60. This is Wednesday. A, a new high is right on top of us. Again, highs uh, 57 to 60 Wednesday afternoon, and that's about average for this time of the year. Now, this is Thursday. The surface high moves on to the east. The winds kick in out of the south, and we'll start to really warm up with potential for mid-60s on here. That'll feel good. And this is Friday. The GFS printing a high of 70. And again, it's got some clouds and potential for a few showers on Friday as warm air advection is the story. Uh, nothing especially widespread, but there could be a few showers around on Friday, not an all-day rain. And a cold surface high is north of us over the northern plains. And, of course, you've got a surface boundary in between. Now, this is the weekend. And I'll say that the modeling has not been in agreement. There's been a lot of uncertainty here. But uh, it seems like the models are in better agreement this morning. This is Saturday at midday. We've got this upper low that's uh, south of New Mexico that's beginning to lift out. And uh, down below that, we've got a moist air mass in place. And that would be a warm day with a chance of showers, not an all-day kind of rain. Uh, and now, it could be a warm day. The GFS printing a high of 73 on Saturday. But there's no major dynamic support for any uh, severe weather, just a chance of showers on Saturday. I guess there could be a touch of thunder in spots. But if we have any severe weather problems, it's going to be at the end of the weekend. And uh, this is certainly a problematic look. This is Sunday at noon off the GFS, it develops a 996 millibar low near Little Rock. And we are squarely in the warm sector of that storm. And uh, if this is right, and remember, there has not been good consistency. This will change again. Nobody knows. I mean, you're going to see a lot of fear mongering and all this stuff, you know, on some of these blogs and things. We just don't know details of what's going to happen five days in advance, specific details. And most severe weather events are really driven by the mesoscale features. Once you get the synoptics in place, the synoptic scale features. Uh, this is Sunday night at midnight. That surface low is near Paducah, Kentucky, with a trailing band of showers and storms in here. So 
if this GFS run is correct, uh, it would be a very warm and balmy day Sunday with potential for mid-70s. Then a squall line comes in here Sunday night with a chance of strong to severe storms. The modes of severe weather, the timing, again, it's just too early. Thought we'd check the European just for the fun of it. This is Sunday at noon. And again, you can see the difference. You know, the, the GFS had a deep surface low over Little Rock Sunday at noon. Well, this has the primary surface low near Buffalo, New York, 990 millibars with a trailing band of showers and storms, but that would not be a potent severe weather threat like the GFS. So that's why you just can't, you know, get too excited one way or the other at this point over what's going to happen. We'll take a look at some of the numbers off the, off the GFS. And again, this is the one with the potent severe weather look that the limiting factor, as typically is the case in December, it's the lack of instability. This is Sunday evening at 6 o'clock local time, and the instability values are very low. However, if we do get up in the 70s and the surface dew points get up in the 60s, the, the capes will be higher than this. This is underestimating them. But the uh, wind fields are screaming. This is the low-level jet Sunday evening. This is about 5,000 feet off the ground, and it's got winds of 60 knots in through the northern part of Alabama, and that certainly is very supportive of severe weather. And the bulk shear numbers are very high. This is from the surface to 925 millibars, the very low-level bulk shear, and that would suggest a tornado threat. But again, I caution you, it's just too early uh, to, to play this up or down one way or the other. We'll just flag the potential for strong, maybe severe storms as the weekend wraps up. But the magnitude of the threat, nobody knows. No matter what you read on, you know, some guy's blog, we just, nobody knows that yet. It, it is beyond the state of the science to know on a Monday the magnitude of a severe weather threat the following Sunday. But just something we'll watch very carefully. Now, this is Monday of next week. This is December 23rd, week from today. The storm is out, and we've got cold air advection. Uh, very good north winds will kick in, and the highs will probably drop into the 40s. This is Christmas Eve, Tuesday, December 24th, cool and dry. And Christmas Day, Wednesday, December 25th, and that would be a cool, dry day with seasonal temperatures, highs in the 50s and lows in the 30s, and that's exactly based on 100 years of averages, what you expect here on Christmas. But if you're dreaming of a white Christmas, obviously ain't going to happen with that. We'll check the European just for the fun of it for Christmas Day. Again, this is December 25th, exactly the same, cool and dry. Into the forecast, December 31st. The amplitude increasing again with the western ridge and eastern trough, and a new surge of cold air comes down the pike New Year's Eve. But, of course, that all, that's all out there in the land of voodoo at this point. That's it for the Weather Extreme video today. We'll have notes in the blog next video here by 4 o'clock this afternoon. If you can, catch us on ABC 3340 News this evening on the live stream of the television side at 4, 5, 6, and 10. Thanks for watching. Have a wonderful day, and God bless.